Okay, example two. Scientists have found certain tree resins that are deadly to termites. To test the protective power of resin, protecting the tree, a lab prepared 16 dishes with 25 termites in each. Each dish was randomly assigned to be treated with 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams of resin. At the end of 15 days, the number of surviving termites was counted. Assume that termite survival tends to be normally distributed with both dosage levels. Is there a statistically significant difference in the mean number of survivals for those two doses? Now here, I think it's worth um, just sort of discussing what will be our X and Y. So our X might be the 5 milligram population and our Y might be the 10 milligram population, right? Um, so the N um, sub X, some people might think it's the 25 termites, but no, actually there's 25 termites in each of 10, I assume, Petri dishes. And so um, really there's eight Petri dishes that have been randomly treated with five milligrams and eight that have been treated with 10 milligrams, right? So this is eight, and eight. And when we say eight, we mean the dishes of treatment. And the termites aren't the subject, they aren't the cases that we're interested in. Um, the termites are, are sort of the test, right? You could get 25 termites surviving, or you could get zero surviving, right? So how many termites survive? That's our dependent variable. Okay. So let's see. Um, well, one thing we could do is start off with our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that these two, uh, these two dosage levels are roughly the same, right? So we might say something like the mu sub x bar minus y bar would just equal zero. They're the same. That's what that means. The alternative is that they are not the same. Maybe that one is more powerful than the other. Um, and we don't know which one. All right, and we could easily set our significance level to be 0.05. And now let's talk about the actual setup, the decision stage. So in the decision stage, let's see what we have here. Um, well, we've set up this uh, 0.05 level rejection. And we could just go ahead and put in the zero for, this is the X bar minus Y bar. But what would be the T? Well, the nice thing about this being zero is that the T as well as, um, I mean, the T uh, distribution as well as the X bar minus Y bar start off the same, but they're not gonna have the same uh, numbers out here. Okay, so that's why we do have to put them on different lines. They're still talking about different things. Okay, so let's talk about the T values. Um, oh, and before we do, it might be helpful to figure out the new degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom of differences will be seven plus seven, so that's 14. Here we can do hypothesis testing, just jump in right away, because we can assume, because it's given, that termite survival tends to be normally distributed within these two dosage rates. Okay, so if you go to example two, you'll actually see the date. Oh. Sorry, one second. Ah. Okay, you'll actually see the data here. Right? And so here we see dosage, so here's the 5 milligrams as well as the 10 milligrams. And here are the survival counts, so how many termites survived. Notice that there's no survival count over 25. 25 is the maximum you could have, um, but even the highest tends to be something like 16. Um, the lowest survival count can't go below zero because you can't have negative termites surviving. Right? Um, so here we have... Uh, the survival count. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what we have here. Can we figure out what the T val the critical T is? So I'll put critical. Can we figure out what the critical T is? Well, I think we can. 
let's see. Um, why don't we use, I, you could use the book. I'm going to use um, Excel to find the critical T. So I, I'm just going to write for myself step four so I remember where I'm at. Critical T. I know that my, uh, I, I know the probability, two-tailed probability I, that I need, 0.05. And I know my degrees of freedom, which is 14. So I see that the critical T is the same as before. And that's because we use the same uh, two-tailed probability and the same degrees of freedom differences. And so here, um, we know that it's negative 2.14 as well as positive 2.14. Great. So what we can do is now from here, um, go on to looking at our actual sample. So I've, I've run out of room there, so I'm going to do most of it here. So let's talk about, oh, this is actually step three. It's part of our decision stage. So step four is now actually talking about the sample. So it would help to find the samples, mean samples, mean difference. So that's going to be the average of one of these, of x, minus the average of y. And we want to know, is this, is this difference going to be significantly different from zero? We can't just look at the raw scores because we need to figure out how many standard errors away we are, right? And so how should we find the standard error for the difference? Well, that's equal to the square root of uh, the variance of x over n sub x plus the variance of y over n sub y. So let's find the variance of x over n sub x and the variance of y over n sub y. Let's do that. So the variance of x all over 8 and the variance of y all over y, oh, sorry, of 8, right? Okay, so we see that the variance for y is a lot different than the variance for x, right? And that's helpful for us to just look at briefly right now, um, just because this will probably give us an idea, well, the variance of these samples are so different, we probably don't have a good reason to pull these two together, right? We don't have a good reason to assume that the populations are similar. Um, so remember, when, you, when you're not sure, when in doubt, go with um, non-homogeneous variances. Just assume that they're different. Once we have that, then we could find the square root of adding these two uh, standard errors together and we get 2.5, uh, right? Once we have all of that, then we could find the samples, sample, the samples mean difference t, right? So, so, so the sample t, right? And that would be, I'll just write sample, sample t. And that would be the uh, sample's mean difference minus zero divided by the standard error of the, dif uh, of the S dot, right? And so what would that be? Well, that would be this guy, and I'm just going to leave out that subtract zero part, divided by the standard error. And we get 2.15. Ooh, we're close, we're close. But it is still more extreme than 2.14. So it doesn't have to be extreme in the negative end. It doesn't have to be extreme in the, it could be either extreme in the negative end or extreme in the positive end. This is extreme in the positive end. It's just right outside our border. And let's find the p-value. So in order to find that p-value, we use t. Uh, distribution, because we have the t value that we want, the degrees of freedom, and we want it to be a two-tailed p value. So it's going to add up this, this little chunk and this little chunk together. And that's going to be uh, 0.049. 
So right under that, so our, we'll, we'll just skip to step four, our p-value equals 0.0449. That is right just a hair underneath our alpha of 0.05, right? But it is underneath, and so we would probably reject the null. Great. 